Okay, so hello everybody and welcome to the uh, ESDR kitchen. I'm Eli Sprecher from the Department of Dermatology at the Tel Aviv Medical Center in Israel and on behalf of the board and my co-chair, Professor Kerdin uh, Conrad, I would like to welcome you uh, all to this new episode of the Molecular Cuisine of the ESDR kitchen where uh, leaders in their field usually share their personal journey to scientific discovery. I'd like to uh, remind you that uh, the uh, ESDR uh, kitchen program, as well as uh, uh, many, many previous episodes are all available on the ESDR uh, website. So today we are really delighted uh, to have with us a great friend and an outstanding uh, world-renowned scientist, Professor Hervé Bachelet. Hervé is Professor of Dermatology at the Université Paris-Cité and in, uh, at the Department of Dermatology of the Saint Louis Hospital in Paris, France. He received his PhD in immunology in 1999. Uh, Professor Bachelet clinical and research activities focus on the inflammatory skin diseases. He's conducting his research at the Laboratory of Genetics of Skin Diseases at the Imagine Institute for Human Genetic Diseases at the Necker Hospital Paris. Professor Bachelet has uh, received several scientific awards, including the Charles Gruper and Robert de Gosse Awards and the Sven Ellerström Lecture Award. He's the former president of the French Society of Dermatological Research and he's the former president of All Society, the European Society for Dermatological Research. And he's currently serving as president of the International Psoriasis Council. Professor Bachelet has published more than uh, 219 manuscripts in peer reviewed journals, and we are all uh, feel and we all feel very uh, deeply uh, privileged to have uh, Hervé with us today. Just before starting, I'd like to mention the fact that uh, this episode is sponsored by uh, Boehringer Ingelheim and UCB. And also to remind you to forward uh, your uh, queries to the, the chat, the Q&A functions. So Hervé, uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, I'd like to uh, very much uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, have you with us and to uh, hear you, your lecture uh, today. The floor is yours, please. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Eli, uh, and uh, many thanks to uh, you and uh, and Curdin for uh, inviting me and to the ESDR um, as a as a society. Um, the ESDR is very uh, obviously very dear to me, and it's an honor and privilege to be here, uh, uh, even remotely with uh, all of you. So in the next minute uh, or so, um, I will share with you um, and uh, what we know and what we don't know about the uh, 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 contribution of the uh, interleukin 36 pathway, uh, mainly in the psoriasis spectrum uh, and uh, mainly, but not exclusively in pustular psoriasis. And uh, I guess the uh, uh, comparative uh, uh, analysis of uh, pustular psoriasis and the, and the mother disease, uh, plaque psoriasis, will be uh, a part of the scope of this uh, 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 of this talk. Um, uh, a couple of disclosures: I've been involved in the development of some uh, anti r 36 uh, uh, receptor antibodies, uh, especially with uh, Beringer Engelheim and Adaptis Bio. So uh, the, uh, what we know now that uh, is that the uh, interleukin-1 uh, family, which is, uh, 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 includes uh, several uh, either uh, pro-inflammatory uh, or uh, regulatory uh, members uh, that you can see uh, on this slide. So in red are the inflammatory members, especially the founder members of the family, L1 alpha and beta, uh, and we'll discuss the receptor in the next slide. Uh, but also a more recently identified uh, family um, that uh, uh, emerged uh, from the group of uh, John Sims at a time, the identification of three agonists, which a uh, lot of redundancy, L36, uh, alpha, beta, and gamma. And uh, uh, in a similar way that there is uh, an L1 receptor antagonist specific for the L1 receptor, there is uh, a main L36 receptor antagonist, which is the uh, L36RA here, but also another anti-inflammatory uh, 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 player, which is uh, interleukin 38, which is uh, uh, ill known regarding its uh, function in, uh, uh, in, in disease and in, uh, uh, in human. 
So this is the organization uh, of the uh, receptor and ligand uh, binding. Uh, to make a long story short, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the key uh, and take home message is that the three agonists of the alpha 6 pathway, alpha 6 alpha, beta, and gamma, uh, they uh, bind uh, the alpha 6 receptor chain, also called IL-1, RL-2, but or in this case, IL-1, RP 2 which is uh, now a little bit obsolete. So let's go alpha 6 receptor chain. Uh, and then following uh, the uh, uh, ligation to this uh, chain, there will be uh, a docking, an approximation by the uh, R1 re receptor accessory protein, which is, which is shared in common with the IL-1 receptor, especially the IL-1 receptor type 1, which is the main receptor driving the IL-1 inflammatory cascade. So the uh, IL-1 alpha and beta are not ligating the uh, uh, binding to the IL-36 receptor and vice versa. The uh, IL-36 agonists are not binding uh, the IL-1 receptor chain uh, and uh, same for the antagonists. What does the IL-36 uh, um, uh, uh, IL receptor antagonist is to uh, bind uh, into the uh, extracellular pocket of the uh, IL-36 receptor, preventing the docking of the IL-1 receptor accessory protein, and then uh, limiting the uh, signal transduction through the uh, tall IL-1 receptor domain, so-called tier domain, which is common to the toll-like receptors, uh, and then uh, preventing the, uh, uh, the uh, un unleashing of the uh, uh, recruitment of the adapter protein mid-88 and the uh, uh, kinase activation of the IRAX and the engagement of an F-kappa-B upregulation of MAP kinase and many pro-inflammatory activities. So that's how it works, and it's very specific to each IL-1 or IL-36 pathway. The first evidence that the IL-36 uh, 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 invalidation of the antagonist uh, and then unsimulated or uncontrolled uh, uh, regulation of the IL-36 uh, agonist in the skin came from the mouse model of what is now the deficiency in IL-36 receptor antagonist. So the group of John Sims uh, working at that time in Amgen uh, published in 2007 this very elegant paper where well, the combination of the uh, homozygous invalidation of the IL-36 receptor antagonist uh, coding gene combined with the uh, uh, skin-directed transgenesis of the uh, IL-36 alpha agonist under the command of, pro, uh, of the promoter of uh, keratin-14 led to uh, uh, a psoriasis-like disease in mouse uh, with uh, a, a very strong neutrophilic uh, contingent, uh, neutrophilic efflux. And uh, interestingly, uh, the uh, knockout of the uh, IL-1 receptor didn't uh, alleviate the inflammation, uh, but the, the knockout of the IL-36 uh, receptor uh, did completely uh, inhibit uh, the, uh, uh, the clinical and the histological uh, and molecular uh, inflammation that time. This model is not dependent on the presence of B cells, T cells. TNF alpha blockade alleviates a little bit the, uh, the, uh, the inflammation, but it's really IL-36 driven all the way through. So uh, these, uh, and there was a, a couple of uh, data in human showing in, the, in this paper, showing there was, there was an upregulation of the IL-36 alpha, beta, and gamma agonists in the lesional skin from both plaque and pustular psoriasis, but no evidence for, uh, there was no uh, genetic investigation. So the first genetic investigations came from uh, two groups, including ours with Asma Smai, uh, uh, and uh, at almost at the same time, uh, Richard Trembath, Francesca Capone, and Jonathan Barker. So tackling the uh, generalized pustular psoriasis were the sort of uh, the primary hypothesis given the variety of the disease It's uh, roughly one, uh, per uh, 90 millions of uh, inhabitants in the uh, northern countries. It's a spectacular inflammation, both at the skin and systemic levels. There is uh, early onset uh, in, in some patients, uh, sometimes in the neonatal uh, period. Uh, but all, of course, uh, what, what was a, a great asset, so assumingly the, the, uh, because of the rarity, because of the, the sort of peaking inflammation, very intense inflammation and neutrophilic flux with these pustules and uh, sometimes the, uh, the, 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 the fever, which is uh, part of the, uh, 
I'm, I'm losing the, the, the pointer, but uh, anyway, uh, the, uh, there was uh, evidence that uh, 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 a good candidate would be that a master driver was an a, a, uh, inborn error of the innate immune system. And uh, through classical linkage analysis uh, and uh, uh, making emerge a, a, a great candidate on chromosome two where clustered all the, uh, uh, most of the members of the, L, uh, of the L1 family and then sequencing the candidates, we were able, to, uh, Asma and her group were able to, uh, uh, to show that there was a homozygous mutation of the L, L36 receptor antagonist encoding gene called L36RN. And uh, these mutations were uh, identical in patients which were uh, followed in our department or in the uh, Eddie Shaker Hospital by Slahedin Marachi and Habida Turkey, who were also instrumental in this paper, uh, showing that they were uh, fulfilling all the uh, criteria for generalized pustular psoriasis, mainly intermittent attack, very severe ones, and in between the GPP attack with uh, 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 pustular rashes and fever and systemic symptoms, they were these chronic lesions, acropustular lesions, geographic fissurated or precaturated tongue, which is uh, one of the uh, hallmarks of the uh, uh, syndrome, let's say, or the what we call DITRA, deficiency of the secret center antagonist. And uh, you can see on this immunostaining analysis using an anti alpha 36 gamma antibody that in these patients, some of the mutation, the homozygous mutation of the uh, alpha 36 encoding uh, 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 gene, uh, there is intense uh, immunostaining uh, expression of the L36 gamma, not in the neutrophilic component here, but in the by the keratinocyte. And one of the main sources of the uh, the L36 uh, system, so to speak, is very much expressed. It's true for the receptor, it's true for the uh, antagonist and the agonist under a pressure of some triggering event in the epithelia, the es esophageal structures, the digestive structures, and the skin, of course, uh, but also the bronchial ducts are uh, uh, a, a privileged site for the uh, expression of the uh, uh, IL-36 uh, uh, pathway players. And then there were several, um, uh, uh, several groups uh, reporting in different pustular variants, uh, both in GPP, but also acute uh, generalized exanthematous pustular eruption called agap drug induced uh, to palmoplantar pustulosis to a lower extent, lower prevalence, but also acrodermatitis continua of alopo, uh, various prevalence of uh, 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 homozygous or heterozygous mutation. I have to say that under our watch in the Tunisian families, but also the Caucasian families with uh, multiplex families, uh, we don't uh, we don't see any phenotype for the carriers, the heterozygous. I know that it exists. Uh, but under our watch in these familial forms, the, they, they don't have any phenotype, including the geographic tone, they, they miss. Uh, so this uh, could be a, a matter of discussion. Um, so uh, what, what, uh, what is important also uh, to, uh, to know regarding the R36 pathway is it's true both for the uh, agonist and the antagonist. The antagonist to become bioactive, the uh, N-terminal uh, uh, methionine uh, has to be removed. And this increased by thousandfold the bioactivity of the antagonist. This is also true by different sites uh, for the uh, agonist. And the, 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 the proteases which are responsible are uh, outlined in, in red here, LSTase for the uh, antagonist. And you can see catepsin G, LSTase, uh, protein S3, and catepsin S for the other, uh, for, the, uh, for the agonist. Uh, I have to say that uh, it makes sense uh, with regard to the recently identified myeloperoxidase gene as a, one of the culprit genes is that uh, the more you have myeloperoxidase in the neutrophils uh, and the less, uh, less active are these proteases. So you will easily understand that uh, a monoallelic or biallelic mutation of the MPO gene encoding the myeloperoxidase will unleash the agonist and uh, with more bioactive form of the agonist and leading to uh, some cases of GPP. 
But uh, the other thing to, uh, uh, important to, uh, to keep in mind is that the main source of these proteases are not only the neutrophils, but the neutrophils liberating during a, process, a mode of cell death called natosis. So they were a, a classical mode of uh, uh, cell death of neutrophils when they liberate their chromatin motif. Uh, decorated with these proteases. So these uh, proteases attached to the chromatin motifs of the nets uh, are the main source uh, of the cleavage of the, uh, uh, of the antagonist and the agonist. So you, you can easily understand why it's important to, uh, uh, with regard to the therapeutics, to uh, inhibit the uh, recruitment of neutrophil and the activation of neutrophil uh, on, the, uh, on the skin site. And this was uh, beautifully shown by the group of Shermos Martin uh, uh, in uh, Trinity College in Dublin. The first evidence that this cleavage step was very important, came from our lab with Hasma and uh, Elodie Bell was instrumental in this paper. And she showed that in these uh, three siblings, uh, the amount of, uh, of alt 6 uh, receptor antagonist is normal. I mean, the, the, the protein is normally thin sensitized, except that the, there is a, a missense mutation replacing uh, the uh, valine by a phenylalanine exactly at the residue of cleavage uh, by the LSTase, preventing uh, the cleavage uh, step and the, uh, generating a retention of the non-bioactive form uh, that was shown by uh, uh, mass spectrometry. Uh, and uh, the, uh, there, there was various degree across the sibling sharing the same uh, mutation uh, in the severity of the disease. That's classic. You could have only geographic tongue or uh, in, uh, in the, the broader, uh, very severe GPP. The other uh, uh, feed, classical feature is not unsurprisingly in the blood, but also the skin. This is a neutrophilic disease. And this is a patient, one of the classical triggers of the GPP flare-ups are the viral triggers. So we published that banal viruses pre-SARS-CoV-2 pandemic were capable to uh, generate some GPP flare-ups on patients. And in this case, this is the, uh, 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 the, the proband uh, carrying this homozygous V2F mutation, preventing the cleavage step. And you can see that during, in the immediate, uh, uh, the, the very shortly after uh, a SARS-CoV-2 infection, he pre presented with a very severe GPP flare-up. And what really dominates in the blood, it's not a type 1 interferon uh, 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 gene, uh, uh, gene signature by uh, encounter nanostring, so the transcriptomics, all blood but it's really the neutrophil. So in this case, you would expect post-infection, type 1 interferon signature, then engage in the neutrophils. What we see is it may be the type 1 interferon signature is lost very early, but at least we don't see an upregulation of the uh, interferon stimulated genes. Other genes have been associated with pustular psoriasis, CAR14, I will allude to that in a minute, uh, be, which has been re, uh, 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 shown to account for both GPP, but also palmoplantar pustulosis, Mendelian form of psoriasis vulgaris with or without psoriatic arthritis, uh, and pteriasis rubra pilaris and CAR14 associated papulosquamous eruption. APU1S3 um, uh, identified by loss, loss these CAR14 mutations are, are, are gain of function mutations. Uh, the loss of function mutation of uh, respectively AP1S3, Serpina3, uh, MPO. So AP1S3, MPO by the group of Francesca Capone and the latter, the, the latter by the group of Ulrike Hofmeyer. And uh, lately, uh, the BTN3A3 as a susceptibility gene uh, by uh, a Chinese group. So all these genes, they have something to do with the L36 pathway, but you will see that probably the hierarchy of the positioning of the L36 pathway might be very different, especially I will take the example of CAR14. What we did with uh, in the lab uh, with uh, uh, Florence Hassan uh, is uh, uh, basically to, uh, uh, and that was done uh, before for uh, when there was uh, mainly uh, R36RN and uh, AP1S3, you can see that mainly in GPP, 23 0.7% in patients from geographic origin, they carry a mutation. This is the sum up of the heterozygous and homozygous mutation. Uh, under our watch in 55 patients with GPP, uh, with uh, patients from North African, but also Asian descent, uh, aside from Caucasians, 
uh, less than 15% uh, were mutated, found mutated homozygously for, by alpha, uh, with uh, R36RN, uh, 9% roughly for uh, CAR14, less for AP1S3, and uh, uh, only two patients for with uh, uh, MPO. So the majority of the patients, they are still waiting uh, uh, to uh, find an answer to their disease, uh, roughly 70% in this case. What is interesting also is the, uh, the, the molecular profiling of the, uh, both in the skin and the blood. And to make a long story short, uh, we, you probably heard uh, 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 already that uh, psoriasis vulgaris uh, uh, and, uh, and GPP are different disease. But when you look at the, uh, when it uh, applies for uh, 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 R23A, it might well be true, but you see that uh, you, you, see, you don't see much uh, R23, uh, but uh, you can uh, uh, see for R36 gamma that uh, it's, uh, it's upregulated uh, in the, uh, both in the psoriasis vulgaris and in, uh, in GPP. And for MX1, uh, which is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I will, uh, uh, I will okay. Uh, the, uh, and for MX1, which is in a, the product of an, an interferon-stimulated gene, you can see that uh, there is a, a striking upregulation, but in very few patients with GPP, and also some degree of upregulation of, uh, uh, of a patient with psoriasis vulgaris in comparison with uh, uh, normal control. Uh, 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 keep in mind that all the, the GPP is an acute uh, leaf layering disease, and that psoriasis vulgaris, these patients, they have chronic stable uh, plaque psoriasis most of the time. And what's striking, what we showed uh, with the, the, the group of Jim Kruger is that the top 20 upregulated genes uh, are uh, in GPP and in psoriasis vulgaris based on, on microarrays are identical, but the magnitudes of upregulation differ, meaning there is a, a major upregulation, more upregulation in the uh, GPP, especially for IL-1B, IL-36A, the IL-36 and IL-1 signature is, uh, is very strong. And in blood, type 1 interference signature has been found associated with systemic involvement, again, by the group of Francesca Capone. Um, so we ask ourselves, uh, why is that, that in all epidemiological studies, more than 40% of the patients with any pustular form of psoriasis, GPP, palmoplantar pustulosis, they also present with plaque psoriasis, knowing that R36RN is not found mutated in patients with plaque psoriasis, especially in patients with GPP plus plaque psoriasis. And this has been reported by several groups um, uh, showing that uh, R36RN pathogenic variants are not detected in psoriasis. Uh, vulgaris uh, uh, patients. Uh, and uh, although in some psoriasis like mouse model, uh, like the imicumon mouse model, uh, IL-36 receptor knockout prevents the disease, but it's a very specific mode of inflammation, as you know. So the CAR14 uh, gain of function mutation uh, genetic background, which has been reported again uh, across different uh, uh, psoriasis uh, 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 endotypes, including uh, uh, pustular psoriasis, GPP, uh, you can see that identical mutations have been uh, accountable, found accountable for psoriasis vulgaris in some patients, PRP, pterosis rubra pioris, and in other patients for GPP. So this creates uh, a, a little bit of a, a possible intersector gene uh, 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 between uh, psoriasis vulgaris and GPP. And most of the mutations found in the uh, CAR14 uh, gene are uh, in hotspots, essentially the, the cold call and the, the, the car domain. So it's a keratinocyte expressed uh, gene and what has been very elegantly shown by two groups, the a Chinese group and the group of uh, Lars French, is that uh, the knock-in uh, reproducing uh, uh, one of the uh, mutation uh, in the uh, uh, coid domain uh, uh, heterozygously in mouse, in a conserved residue between uh, human and mouse, uh, generates an IL-17 uh, uh, dependent uh, 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 skin inflammation uh, uh, with a, a strong neutrophilic flux, uh, but uh, increasing the keratinocyte response to IL-17 uh, uh, stimulation through the engagement of uh, BCL10 and MALT1. So the, the articulation with IL-23 and IL-17 uh, exists for IL-36, 
but uh, all the attempts to uh, uh, to uh, inhibit L17 and the, uh, the, the DITRA mouse model failed to inhibit the uh, the uh, inflammation. In the CARD14 dependent mouse model, it is successful. The question is, does it work in human with uh, with this mutation of CARD14? There are preliminary evidence that for following ustekinumab or now the L17 blockers or the L23 blockers, it does in some patients. So we ask ourselves, is there another intersector? Because you saw that CAR14 is not accounting for the majority of the uh, mutations in, uh, in patients with GPP. Um, and and uh, we, we were searching with uh, Florence Asson for some uh, other culprits. Uh, so we, we looked at some uh, signature which we have uh, in chronic uh, pustular inflammation. So we tackled first palmoplantar pustulosis, where the prevalence of the mutation for uh, 36RN is less than 5%, and we compared with psoriasis vulgaris. And to make a long story short, this uh, encounter uh, transcriptome analysis uh, of the lesional skin paraffin embedded section, you can see the psoriasis vulgaris. Yes, you have a contingent of patients showing a strong type 17 response, but you have a subset of patients with a interferon stimulated gene response, which is dominant. Keep in mind that these patients, they have chronic stable plaque psoriasis, meaning it's not the acute phase of the inflammation for uh, acute flare-up of uh, pre-existing plaque psoriasis. This is an important, to, uh, important to know. And uh, you, you see that in, patient, in some patients with palmoplantar pustulosis, you might have some degree, you have some degree of uh, L36 uh, upregulation that you have also in psoriasis vulgaris, either alpha, beta, gamma, or uh, all of them. Uh, but you have also some patients with a strong interferon stimulated gene response uh, that exists uh, in this limited uh, set. So uh, uh, there is preliminary evidence that the top one interferon uh, response characterizes a subgroup of patients with uh, 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 pustular psoriasis, uh, but also psoriasis vulgaris. And we looked at the uh, whole blood analysis of the transcriptomic. And again, to make a long story short, you can see that uh, the majority of the patients with psoriasis vulgaris, they don't have a strong interferon score, a high interferon score, but a subset of patients, they do. So it seems that, uh, and it seems to be somehow uh, uh, true for some uh, patients with uh, 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 pustular psoriasis, but uh, we're expanding these, uh, these studies. And for the, as for the neutrophilic signature, it seems to be a little bit, not the same, but some patients with troop psoriasis vulgaris. Interestingly enough, this is one of the two siblings with plaque psoriasis, very severe, but with neutrophilic cholangitis in one of them, no pustular lesions. In the neutrophilic cholangitis is one of the uh, features of uh, GPP. And these patients presented with a strong neutrophilic signature, although never ever with GPP. So it seems that a subgroup of patients with psoriasis vulgaris, they have a neutrophilic signature. And of course, this patient is not mutated for any of the candidates of, uh, for GPP. So there should be something else, especially because he had the same disease observed in his uh, sibling. Uh, and you can see that for uh, the uh, uh, neutrophilic signature, uh, few patients with uh, uh, pustular psoriasis uh, showed, but again, these are mainly uh, uh, palmoplantar pustulosis, uh, only one was a GPP. Uh, so there is uh, evidence that uh, type 1 interferon and neutrophilic uh, signature might be observed, although uh, in a minority of patients, in patients with psoriasis vulgaris. So uh, destroying the idea of an hermetic cleavage between the two entities. But anyway, uh, should we reconsider the disease taxonomy based on the pathogenic uh, uh, single gene model uh, architecture? Uh, uh, I, I believe we, we should and call not, not necessarily keep the old, uh, old taxonomy, but CAR14 associated disease. We'll see in real life if this is really associated with a privilege optimal response to IL-17 or IL-23 blockers. And if we know already that for the deficiency in IL-36 receptor antagonists for the anti-IL-36 receptor, and for the GR deficiency of IL-1 receptor antagonists following anakinra treatment, this is really uh, very successful. And this is, of course, uh, a proof of principle for precision medicine in auto-inflammatory syndromes.
And to end up, uh, of course, these data paved the way for the development of NTR36 receptor antibodies. Uh, the, uh, this is the design of the antibody by uh, the uh, BRND uh, group. So uh, uh, blocking the uh, ligation of the uh, agonist into the uh, uh, pockets of the uh, uh, of the L36 receptor. The proof of concept study show was very promising, very appealing, showing across uh, different genetic backgrounds, uh, only three out of the seven patients carrying the L36 RNA mutation. Five out of the seven patients showed clear to almost clear status as early as week one, week one. We can't wait for week uh, four, 16, uh, 20 in these patients because of the instability of the disease and the life-threatening potential of it. And uh, this is the first ever random placebo-controlled trial in uh, general hypostula psoriasis, showing the superiority regarding the primary endpoint of spezolimab over placebo. The randomized control phase was one week, but you can see that 54% versus 6% uh, uh, reach the uh, pustulation subscore of zero uh, at week one. And uh, the, uh, not all the patients, of course, uh, were reaching the clear to almost clear status uh, after week one, uh, leaving open uh, other, uh, other, two, other drug and uh, precision medicine approach for other patients. Uh, other studies with spezolimab are ongoing, but also imcidolimab. Imcidolimab, like I said, uh, anti l 6 receptor antibody is uh, uh, in phase three, developed by Anaptis Bio, and a uh, 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 very appealing study in uh, Netherton syndrome when there is a strong uh, l 6 uh, signature. Um, um, Alain is the PI in the international study, uh, a phase two placebo control study in Netherton syndrome, but also in Edra and superativa phase three, an inflammatory bowel disease outside the field of dermatology. To sum up the uh, identification of the genetic architecture underlying pustular psoriasis uh, unravels the key contribution of inborn errors of the skin uh, systemic uh, innate immune system. The single gene models allow the design and further approval of targeted uh, therapies customized for the uh, benefit of the patients uh, with a spezolimab already approved in acute leaf rearing. And however, the one target therapy fits all paradigm does not really fit with the heterogeneity, heterogeneity of the disease and its mechanistic consequences and pave the way for precision medicine approaches. And uh, I would like to acknowledge all the, uh, all the members of the, of the team at the Imagine Institute, especially uh, Florence Assance, Negun Miskinite, uh, Yannick Crow, um, uh, Anna Obnani, of course, but also the, the pioneering role of Asma Smaï, uh, with, uh, Elodie Bar, uh, collaboration with Jean-Laurent Casanova, and uh, all the uh, collaborators, of course, or our friends and colleagues from all over the world. Thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot, Hermé, for this <clears throat> excellent presentation with a lot of data in a, in a short period of time. Um, so we'll open up the discussion so far. There's nothing on the chat. I'll have a few, but just uh, as a reminder for all the uh, uh, people listening, please uh, send your, your question through the chat or the Q&A and, and we'll um, hand them over to, to Hervé. I'm having a, a rather specific question now. You, you, you mentioned about CORD-14 mutations and, and uh, the role of potential R36 in them. Uh, and, but however, if you look at PRP, that's the one disease which just literally has no single neutrophilin in there. So do you think that still R36 blockade or the pathway itself plays a role there and we could use it for PRP? Well, honestly, I... Uh... Uh, we, we don't know at this stage uh, because the, 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 of the, uh, you know, the, the, the number of patients enrolled in the clinical trials with the L36 uh, receptor blockers uh, with CAR14 mutation for which we know for sure they are pathogenic, uh, they, they, they are really minimal. So we can't really tell uh, what is, is the clinical response optimal in these patients. What I can say uh, I can't say for which uh, trial, but uh, the uh, first, the, the patients with uh, a concomitant psoriasis uh, vulgaris, they tend to respond uh, uh, at least uh, uh, less optimally uh, than the, the, the ones with pure GPP. And second, it happens that uh, I, I, we have two patients in the department with uh, either a compounded heterozygous or heterozygous mutation, for which we know for sure 
that they are pathogenic because Anne Bocock explored uh, mechanistically those uh, and they've been shown to be really pathogenic. And, 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 uh, and uh, th these patients are responding to L23 blockers and L17 blockers. And one of them was dropped out from a, a trial uh, with a L36 uh, blocker uh, for lack of efficacy after we, we knew he received the, uh, the active principle. So I'm not saying that L36 blockade doesn't work in these patients. And Bocock uh, in her pioneering papers showed that there is an impact on the, uh, 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 the upregulation of the uh, uh, L36 gamma transcript in keratinocytes. But it doesn't mean that uh, it's a master driver of the inflammation. I tend to believe that the immunity and the JID papers by the two group, the Chinese and the Switzerland group, uh, this is quite compelling evidence that uh, IL-17 blockade might be the way to go in these patients. Might, might. And but in the same regard, I mean, the, the pump postular psoriasis was a failure for, for Spezo, so yep. IL-36 blockade. And you showed some nice data that TH1 is up. Do you think it's just there is, uh, I mean, you show PPP, but not, not postular. But do you think that's, that's the case because it's just more... Pathways active in in posterior psoriasis than in GPP? Possibly, yeah, yeah. There is a type one of uh, a strong type one uh, response, uh, and 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 the uh, and of course the uh, what is very interesting for us, by the way, not only uh, for posterior psoriasis but also for a subset of patients with psoriasis vulgaris and or, or atherodermic psoriasis, as the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, so the strong upregulation of. Uh, uh, interferon stimulated genes, and 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 again, we know from the uh, the pioneering papers by uh, uh, Michel Julien and Frank Nestle that the acute phase of the inflammation there is a role of uh, type one interferon. But what we see uh, is a, a, a very strong uh, type one interferon response in chronically affected patients with either pustular or uh, psoriasis vulgari. So we believe there is something that uh, orientates the inflammation towards this uh, uh, innate immune player, yes. Mm. There's a question <clears throat> from Teresa Finister. Um, do you think GP, uh, GPP and EGEP yeah, are two different diseases or two, di di two different entities or in reality rather both postular psoriasis variants? And that's a great question because uh, sometimes the uh, identical mutation have been found in the two population. And uh, what we experience, I'm not saying that a jab doesn't exist, uh, but uh, what I can say is that there is a major potential confounder that uh, the clinicians have to pay attention to is that uh, one of the uh, uh, very potent trigger of uh, GPP flare-ups are viral infection, which is a reason for prescription of drugs like uh, NSAIDs, antibiotics, which have been uh, 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 involved or accused to, uh, uh, to uh, be imputable for a, a jab. So uh, it could be drug uh, virus interaction and then be becoming a danger signal as well. Uh, but uh, uh, in practice, we have to uh, to uh, to pay attention, especially when there are different drugs uh, for different AGEP flare-up. Then the idea to have that it is GPP uh, should uh, should be should emerge, and uh, definitely there should be, I think, some uh, some trials with alpha six uh, blockers in AGEP. I think. So, so as a follow-up question, there, basically, do you think that? Um, Genetic variants in, uh, for example, the IL 36 RN gene may serve as pharmacogenetic markers, which may uh, perhaps uh, help us prevent those uh, AGEP and AGEP like uh, eruptions. Uh, so, should we, I mean, could that actually be clinically useful in terms of uh, what type, for example, of antifungal? treatment to recommend to a certain individual? Well, I, absolutely. Well, I didn't mention that there is a flare prevention study that had been published in the Lancet uh, uh, with subcutaneous uh, uh, administration of uh, uh, of, of spesolimab, and it works. And, and, and not only it works, but uh, over placebo, but uh, in, in the patients with alpha-6-RN mutation, homozygous, I mean, none of these patients over the 14 weeks, 48-week uh, period, 
they, they didn't relapse at all. Um, so uh, it, I, I, I hope it, uh, it, it answers to your question. I think that in some patients that shows repeated flares, uh, having the alt 6 uh, RN mutation, for which we know for sure, and I didn't mention some studies we performed with uh, asthma uh, in, the, in, in the lab at the time, uh, reproducing the uh, the functional impact uh, of the uh, of the different identified mutation, uh, and this is really uh, a, a, a tremendous uh, a, a lot of work uh, at the bench. I think now with the, the help of uh, artificial intelligence, uh, we might predict more reliably uh, which are the pathogenic mutations. I mean, there is already this. Uh, um, AlphaFold missense software, which has been published in Science by the Google DeepMind people, um, so I think it will help to predict uh, what is the, what are the variants uh, which are pathogenic, and then uh, in some patients, then start a, a flare prevention uh, a targeted therapy. Absolutely. Do you think that there's a way to distinguish uh, AGEP and GPP? Well, what, what I would like to see is, um, um, and I heard that it's been performed, uh, at least uh, not unpublished under my watch, are uh, patch tests, uh, uh, drug patch tests uh, in, in, in true like GPP patients. Uh, in other words, you know, patients we know for sure they, they didn't take the drug uh, and uh, they have they showed some GPP flare ups. And when they are in remission to um, kind of, uh, you know, have some patch testing, uh, 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 investigating the uh, hypothesis that a drug can behave as a danger mm -hmm. signal uh, for the. And, and uh, uh, but I, I think that would be uh, something uh, interesting. Uh, to dig deeper into the uh, differentiation attempts between the two entities. So I, I don't dare to say that, uh, you know, there is, uh, because, because you know, a JEP reported as such by very experienced, you know, uh, uh, clinicians and the experts in drug, uh, uh, skin drug eruptions, like Miami Krenhop and others and Catherine Smith, uh, uh, yeah, uh, out at six RN homozygous or so compound is uh, uh, composite heterozygous have been uh, identified. So again, uh, this is, uh, you know, to take uh, as it is. But like I said, I think beware of the confounders. Yeah, we have some, some preliminary data as well. And it's, it's funny, the expression profile, some of them are really almost identical or identical to GPP. While others are really far apart. So it seems like also in EGEP, there's some, some differences. And there's still a lot to do there. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I, and the eosinophilic uh, thing and keratinocyte cell death, honestly, um, the, we, we, we are not big believers in the, you know, if we would do that in the, in the blind manner, I don't think that uh, that would uh, really uh, differentiate anymore the two entities. So we have to find something else. Hopefully. Still a lot to do for the young ones. Yep. So thanks a lot. Uh, we're already at quarter past two. So uh, first of all, thanks to Hervé for this excellent presentation and the lively discussion. Uh, thanks, Eli, anyway, for, for co-chairing and having the introduction. Um, we actually have from the same lab, more or less, uh, right away the next kitchen. So Marie Tauber, who's also from the Imaging Institute, I just learned. Uh, and Anna Redl, uh, they uh, will present the next kitchen seminar, which is a freshly baked. So these are really two uh, recently published papers, uh, landmarks papers, which will be presented. It's going to be on uh, January 17th, uh, a usual time spot on uh, uh, Wednesday at 1.30. Then <clears throat> obviously uh, we'll have again the ESDR next year. It's going to be the first week of September in Lisbon. It's going to be an amazing meeting with absolutely outstanding speakers. Uh, I think the registration should open up any time soon or any day soon. Uh, as mentioned, absolutely uh, excellent speaker lineup from all over the world. So absolutely um, a, a must go there in September. 
So with that, uh, again, a uh, big thank you to uh, Hervé for the presentation, also for UCB and Beringer for sponsoring this um, episode and all of you for attending this year's, this week's uh, kitchen. Uh, it's going to be live in a few days on Alive. It's going to be available on YouTube in a few days. And all of you, thank you very much for attending and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.